Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I am Johnny B. But together we are Modeling for Advantage. Advantage. Mate, here we go. Warlord Games sent us a copy, preview copy, a review copy. Beautiful. Combined arms. Awesome. So, so do you know what this is, John? Uh, this is their new farming simulation. Uh, <laughs> new farm simulator, mate. That's exactly what it is. Combine harvesters. Right? Yeah. So it's a new... It's a standalone board game. Um, but it's also a campaign system for their many World War II games. Sweet. Land, sea and air. Oof. This box contains four game maps. Orders board, rules manual, 66 plastic miniatures. These are not like sprues. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's not okay. like 66 bros. Blitz markers, operations board, card decks, plastic objective, tokens, all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, they reckon you can play it as a board game, and we are going to do that and tell you how that went. But that's like half of the book. The second half of the rule book. Campaign, campaign rules. rules. So you can use this as a way of sort of generating scenarios for Bolt Action, Cruel Seas, Victory at Sea, and Blood Red Skies. Perfect. Beautiful, right? So, this is what we get. Shall I send you a sprue? Give me some in. Give me a sprue. Now, I was thinking that we'd paint these, but actually them being different colours is important mm, for the game. Yeah. Yeah? So you get you get three identical ones of these. So, grey is neutral. Okay, which is good. I've got the green. Uh, you've got the and green. you've got tan. And I've got the tan, you oh. see. Um, so, uh, you're Britisher though, so you give me the Feldgrau one, and I'll give you the Tan one. I see. Are you with me? So, these are essentially tokens yeah, for playing is... the game, um, representing different unit types. So, you've got your little squatting infantry bro, Beep -beep. representing infantry forces. Now, interestingly... Are your, is your German ones with Thompsons? Uh, yeah, mate. Sweet, same. <laughs> same, yeah, same sculpt. Um... <laughs> The, then you've got your uh, three tank struck assault gun models, yep. which represent mechanised forces. Okay. So they perform slightly differently on the campaign map, but they both would represent bolt action armies. It's just this one would be like a tank war army, you know, everybody's mechanised or in transport yes. or whatever. Right. Whereas this one necessarily. Your boat units to represent your navies, be that cruel seas or victory at sea. The objective markers on here, these are different types of objectives and they have um, impact All in sorts. games. Look at that with the cards. Your three uh, fighter models to represent aircrafts. Uh, so that's your four different forces types, planes, ships, mechanized and foot. And then these blitz tokens, which impacts, um, again, have an impact on the campaign set. And it's like an extra move, but maybe you're a bit out of steam or okay. that, that kind right. of thing. So have a look at it. So you get, yeah, you get, Three different colours, which allows you to play. I think in the one the scenario I looked at, which we'll play later, it says the grey ones are the, like all the objections. This is the neutral one. Yeah, yeah. But because they put the other pieces on, if you're playing in a different theatre, you could you, use you them might as... want to use the grey ones as one of the protagonists and use one of the other ones as it. So it's giving it's giving you all the pieces. But essentially, you are going to need the three different colours to play. Okay. Because once the tan army is taking control of this objective, then you, swap it you swap it out for a tan one. There's no flag or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? So painting them might present small problems it would be. Uh, in that regard. There's two decks of cards. Which would you like, the small or the big deck? Uh, give us the small one. You take the small deck, you have a look at that, and I'll go through the other bits. Um, so in terms of playing the game, you've got this order. I mean, this is good, thick. That's good to see. Card. So there's a little bit of a pre-turn, um, almost like marketplace, like you get another board. So you decide whether you're going to invest all of your initiative in moving, activating your fleets or your armies Ooh, or your navies. Okay. Yeah. So you can't That's move. Cool. You get. You're going to move pieces potentially multiple times in a turn, but you can't move all the things all the time. Sweet. So that's that's an interesting one. <clears throat> In terms of mechanics, and you can see on there as well, that's got for the simple version of the game, it's got the kill numbers. If I attack you and roll a dice with some modifiers, this is the score I need. This is how your campaign scoring system works. So, this is almost like with magic operations or whatever board. your operations board. So, the initiative deck 
and the resolution date. So if you've got, if you've got, I the am big working one, on opening. <laughs> you're still yeah. failing to yeah, open yeah, yeah. the resolution date. I'm working on it. And and the destroying units pool. So all of those mechanisms operate through this board. Is okay. that per player that board? No, this That's, is a this, this is, is the, a, a shared thing. Yeah, we share these decks. Yeah. Um, uh, and then I've got to say I'm impressed with the quality of the tokens. I like. I mean, them. yes, I like those. Nice so uh, we uh, got, we got. Yeah. So I did. I did have a quick look at this double-sided token sheet here. Oosh. Um. So when you are playing the basic game, just just the game out of the box as a game, you can use the miniatures. But if you're going to play these as ball action armies, where you're going to have different armies. Ah. in different conditions so you'd use these tokens okay and they're blind so on the back it says german army one two three or whatever but on the front it's just yeah yeah and you also have um you also have scout tokens a part of this this so there's concealed movement okay so it's like not that. concealed it's like when a unit goes into concealed it basically creates a blind and they can move separately um, but they don't have any combat power or anything. But yeah, so it allows you to track them. If you want persistent damage on your armies, yeah. you're going to need to know which one's which. And you're going to want to conceal that from the other player. Yeah. So that's what that's it. I'm not sure what these Vs are for. Uh, v but for I, victory! <laughs> I haven't read the rules in immense detail. Um, a pair of different colored oh, things. beautiful. They're, look, I, you know... I, if you haven't got any and you needed some, but they didn't waste any of the money you paid on buying on, ex on, <laughs> on, on, on expensive dice. But um, the kind of the key um, feature of this beyond the rules is these boards. And what's really pleasing. You get four. Or there's four, four boards in here, and you've got four very different theatres. So this one, just in case you don't know, let's tell oh. you on the back. Northwest Europe. So you've got you've got the south coast of England on there. Um, and you've got the Normandy coast here. Sweet. Uh, in the book, it tells you how to deploy on these. So there is a deployment zone. So the, the whole top line here is the British deployment. You see it's in... Shaded. You see it's shaded of. in a darker green, yeah. yeah. Um, so, for example, on this one, there's two sea zones in the British deployment zone. There's only one C zone in the German. Mm. So when you come to choose your pieces at the start of the game, the British can take twice as many fleet pieces. Sweet, but they don't get they don't get more. They just have, to have a higher proportion of ships. Oh. All right, those are your deployment zones. So it ends up being a little bit weird. For example, on this one, although it's, you feel this is like nineteen forty four Normandy, yeah. the Germans are actually starting around around Paris or whatever, and the cities and stuff yeah, are all neutral. Of, yeah, that's... but that's to try and make a simple game of it, right? Yeah. So you've got this one. Next, you got the North Africa map, Oosh. which which again, you know. It, it's a trying to make it not just a big desert. <laughs> They've put Crete on there as well. You've got Crete. There's You've got a lot Crete. More sea on yeah. there. So, because you deploy objectives is part of the pre-game that players choose Whoa. where stuff goes. So if you've got more maritime power on then this map, slap them out you might want to put stuff on Greece because you're in a better position to keep hold of it. Cool. For example. All right. So that's your North Africa map. Oosh. This is your Caucasus map. Um... It's not Stalingrad. This is uh, Caucasus. This is Crimea. The Stalingrad is over here somewhere. Mm. Um, on this map, you know, I did that the right way around. Um, yeah, but you got that. So you got an eastern front one, and then you got the uh, Pacific. So this is uh, for Guadalcanal. Bit of island hopping there. What one is that? Oh, Guadalcanal. Because you just said it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's got it's got it written on there. Yeah, it yeah. worked. In, in words. Yeah. So you'll see on on this one. So presumably this is the Japanese. These are all Ooh, to see. They've only got navy deployment zones. You can put armies in a navy deployment zone, but they're in transports. I think um, you must be able to. Otherwise, you can't really you play on this map. You just drown. Yeah. You can never. You can never do that. Um, so that's that. Did you get the cards up? I, I did finally. So yeah. we can we can wait. I've got the resolution. What's this? A flip and reserve resolution deck. So. Um, yeah, so I, I have had a quick gander at the rules. Oh, I should show you the rule book, really. Um, so in in terms of in terms of the layout, it's it's pretty much as you would expect to find it. It's nice and simple. Lots of diagrams in here. Um, it's still kind of retained. 
So the artwork and the and the style that kind of um, commando comic feel that a Very lot of much. modern yeah. warlord stuff has, yeah. and I like that because I'm playing war games mostly because of how I felt about them as a kid, <laughs> not as as a grown man. I have I have a lot of issues around you know enjoying military things <laughs> and all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, whereas as a kid, I wasn't burdened by those problems. I just enjoyed the heroism and the stuffing your fist down a crowd's throat kind Naturally. of stuff. Naturally. So anyway, the cards. These these are. We'll talk to you probably more about this after after we've played it. But these are what are going to keep the campaign fresh. So you've got the the resolution deck. Is that a mixture of objectives? All sorts going on. There, there are these double-sided objective cards here. Mm. Cultural centre, commercial hubs, which have certain things on them as well. Yes, yes, they do. So that, that deck, the way that's going to work, again, that's a pull deck, is you turn cards over at certain points and you score victory points if you have that control of that sector, mm. that type of objective, when that card is turned, which keeps the victory points a little bit elusive. Which you can't cool. be certain. You know, sometimes in board games, it can get a bit gamey with that. I need two victory points this turn stuff. The deck isn't too big, so you mill it. It's going to come back, but you don't have a lot of control over when it's going to come. It's all sorts of situations. There's a resolution, rain. Rain, yeah. Now it's got writing on this side. Yes. Difficult terrain, units may not move, and additional hex using blitz tokens. Yes. And then on this side, yep. looks to be something else. Each player may choose to battle or reinforce. So at different points in the turn, it, the back of the card has got like an ongoing effect, but at certain times you have to draw, you have to turn resolution. So that's in effect until you're required to flip it, right. then you do the thing on the other side. It becomes a situation. Okay, so yeah. you've got those, and then there's um, oh, there's loads major operations. Yeah, so the, all kinds of all kinds of stuff. But I think rather than waffling on about stuff that we don't know, yeah, man, and this, uh, this is this is the initiative thing to other aspect of it. But we should be able to tell you a lot more about this when we've had a quick play of the game. We'll be right back. Oosh. <laughs> Well, mate, we're back. We had a go. We, we did have a go. We've not played this for hours and hours and hours. Played an a hour and a half, something like that. Played through about three turns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just so that to translate what we'd read. Yeah. That you know, and, and, and to work it out. Get it, used to that. The, the third turn that we played took about 15 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> you know, once you get into it. What Once once you get into it. Um, i got to say, John, as a campaign system, as a, as a mechanism for creating battle games, mm. I like it. I think there's a lot of potential there. So for such a simple game on, on, on a little board with only six pieces, these cards make a lot more difference. Yes. The big thing that we didn't appreciate until we played at least at one turn was that you don't get to do everything every turn. No. It's, it's yeah. It, <laughs> that was a big thing. prompted by that resolution card. That the is a key factor. Yeah. When you when you come to the end of the turn, you turn a resolution card. You may or may not be able to catch your objectives. You may or may not be able to fight battles due to weather conditions and yep. so forth. You know, you may or may not get some reinforcements. It's like there's a, there's a the end step, as you will, where the, the resolution phase of the game is thing. random. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that messed with our head a little bit, actually. Well, you'll see it in that little snippet of a video that's rolling. Yeah, I mean, bottom. they're going to see it run at super high speed, yeah, so they're probably not going to... We got thrown as we were going through. It's like, well, do I capture this now, or does that happen in the end step? Until we turned over yes, this card. So, and nope, you capture objectives in the resolution step if the card says that you can. Boom. Boom. Um, now, in the three turns that we played, <laughs> we lost a lot of units. Oh, I didn't. You didn't, <laughs> but we didn't fight a single battle, not a land battle land or battle, sea battle. No, we didn't. And, and, I, and, and I think that was probably some of the things that we chose. So we each took two aircraft. You get six models to start with yep. from um, armies, mechanized forces, air forces and ships. Yep. We each took a pair of planes. 
and they really dominated our game. True fact. Um, if w when we go on to play this as a campaign, bolt action, etc., campaign, and I think we will, right? We, oh, I would like to. We definitely, we definitely decided we're going to do that. We we'll do it on this board for the first mm -hmm. first attempt. Um, I think we should house rule. It's only one plane. Yeah, or maybe even no planes. Well, you still want plane. You still want a plane. plane. You still want a plane. The thing with the planes is just the ability to swoop down in the final step of the game and and pick off and they're yeah, actually anywhere you like yeah as well. and, and things like ships and tanks in the campaign system are quite easy to destroy um which isn't a huge problem because they're regularly reinforced and replaced yep. Yep. but there isn't a lot you can do from stopping a plane coming and raiding you because the chance another plane shoots it down is really low mm -hmm. Um, so that's just a little a little thing learned about making our game a bit better next time. Because um, when we did get to the big crunch, when we had armies and navies involved in what looked like was going to be a, a big battle, your planes actually just shot yeah, up all of my troops. Yeah, no, we were actually going to have a combat. Planes dropped in behind you. You didn't have an opportunity with the... Um, I quite like the order system there. You There were no free spaces for you to be mm. able to move out of contact. We're, we've not talked about the order system. We'll come on to that. That yeah. was a big thing. Um, yeah. And yeah, just obliterated. Yeah. So the, the, the mechanics, it's got some real kind of modern game mechanics learnt from Euro game stuff. So of the, t of the two boards, this board really, really mixes up the game. So yeah. this is like your marketplace in a Euro game. So there you see you've got one, two, and three orders for army, navy, um, and air power. These can only be selected once by either player. So air three, you move up to three air units. Mm. But air three is then gone. Yep. That is and available. you've also only got three choices that you can make. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Now, there are ways to defend yourself against planes. There's a slim chance you can shoot them down with anti-aircraft fire, but you can actually move out of the way. Yes. If you yeah. bring your planes in too early, you know, which is, which is feels gamey, but is more to, to, to put some limits on that. It's like, this is an air interdiction type yeah. stuff. This space that you were in is swarming with aeroplanes. But this keeps the strategic map really fresh. So does that resolution step. Yeah, that was fun. Um, uh, we 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 barely touched the initiative cards, and I, I would no. like to see how they affect them. Um, some of them were quite cool. I had one in my hand, which you didn't yeah. see, yeah. which was uh, paratroopers. So if mm -hmm. I lost one of my infantry dudes, I mm -hmm. can bring it back in and put it anywhere on the map. Oh, that right. was not adjacent to any of yours, right? Um, and linking that in with bolt action. Mm. I mean, I best get started. Yeah. Painting yeah. some paras. Um, so the initiative cards, we didn't use them very much, um, and this is about getting a bit more skilled at the campaign yeah, game. Possibly. So you only get the initiative cards, more of them. Potentially you do from the turn of this resolution deck, I'm yes. not sure. Yeah. Um, but you definitely, you one of the things you can do instead of moving your pieces, is you can seize the initiative and you take a couple of these cards and you take the I go first token. But... We always felt we had pieces to move. Always, always. <laughs> always. But actually being a bit more gamey. And these cards come in two different types. The one, I think, gap in the manual when you first have a playthrough is, I don't remember it telling me to do this, mm. is this initiative deck, there are um, Victory at Sea and Blood Red Skies and Bolt Action unique cards in here. And if you're not planning to play those games need to take them out yes yeah if you're playing the board game so if you or just not including... playing the board game um now um this is you know this is not access and allies this is this is not a board game that you're that you're just gonna play 10 times just for it as a board game it was a fun game to play yeah and I'd play it again. Independently, as its own thing? As its yeah. own thing. But it, it's not like it would replace. A, a, do you know what I mean? No, it would it not It was interesting. Replace. The mechanics are really interesting. Yeah. As a game design, I, I really liked it. But as a vehicle for creating interesting games. I think we've got a, a nice canvas I, there. I, I, think, I think so. Um, what we haven't done, which also probably limits air power. Massively. Um, is... We played with the miniatures, um, but you but with the to when you're playing with ball action at orders of battle, you're gonna need numbered tokens. But that's concealed from the other guy. That's the top side. Mm. And what as long as you're concealed, you have you can have a scout piece, um, so, which is basically a, a blind dummy. 
And that's going to limit air power because it doesn't know which one's a yeah. real target. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think that's going to change it It's going to double the number of completely. counters yeah. on the board. There's a, there's a lot more to try and do. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We can definitely do it on this map. We're probably, we're not sure, we're probably not going to quite play it 100% as written, part because the games that we've played, we think that we'd be playing a lot of Blood Red Skies and not much of the other. Yes, yeah, yeah, true. Um, and we want to play a bit of Blood Red Skies. So we're probably going to mix and match. Yeah. Like we were going to mostly resolve the air combat using the, the board game system, but occasionally do some of the air to air combat. Yeah, it gives us that option. Give us that option, but we look like we play the other games, the Cruel Seas and the Bolt Action. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and I mean, any thoughts? Any thoughts from you? Um, it's difficult. I would like to play that again to see whether we get similar results. Exactly right, and especially with those tokens because that will change everything. It yeah. was very air heavy. It was very air dominant uh, for that. Um, it's a it's a massive canvas that we can use, and as you say. We're not going to be doing it straight out of the book because I think there's a few mechanisms that are not going to sit too well with how we like to play, but we're certainly going to pick some of the You mean like the, the good point battles. size of the, the armies size, and those kind of things? Just things like that. Yeah. We're going to adjust yeah. slightly. Yeah. Um, but as a base system from which to draw a campaign. That's perfect. Yeah. It just gives us a, a, I mean, a narrative. I mean, even, even as simple as we, although control of the objectives was from round two, all the objectives being controlled, we never scored any because no. that that comes up on the resolution cards as yes. well. We so you know it's well. it's it's not it's not as bean county. It's a it, it's a lot more gamey, mm. uh, if you will, and a lot more out of player control. Yeah, and I like that. Otherwise, it gets a, a little game like this is going to get very samey. You know, straight down to there's a deck of maybe ten cards. Which which has your opening gambit? It's yes. Yeah. There's a unique part to this time you're playing, um, which is not one because in the one we drew, it was getting to the other guy's deployment zones. Yeah. You're on the other side of the English Channel, <laughs> and if you get your units down this end of the board, you really have won. I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I feel very positive about this going forward. Um, right, now, control the objectives has an in-game effect. A, a, a little that was one. Nice. Yeah. Um, a little one. Of which, again, I had the airfield, so... You got an airfield, which made his air, air raids even more powerful. All right, well, we'll, we'll be working on uh, translating this. You're looking at our bolt action, uh, cruel seas and blood red skies models, looking to put force lists together and start a campaign of this. So we'll have the, a video of us playing this. Sweet. And then stopping and doing the battles as, as they occur. Sounds good um, to me, man. Because I, I enjoy I enjoy the campaigns. Yeah. I enjoy the campaigns a lot. And and just having off the shelf systems for it, really nice. Down the road, you know, we do some Pacific stuff, whatever else. I hope you found this video useful, guys. Thank you for Thanks watching. For watching. Bye bye. bye. If you're enjoying our coverage of combined arms or the battle reports associated with the campaign that we've been playing, why don't you consider buying a system from us at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you. John is on. The things are on. These are the things, these are the things. My face with optional moving. Optional moving head! Woo! John, you're beautiful. I know. You know this. You know this. All right, should we do it? Of course. Of course. I should have put on my Ipris file glasses. We've got reading to do, haven't we? Hmm. So Ip Chris files on Netflix or whatever now, you know. Have you seen the new yeah. yeah, yeah. The new Ip Chris. It's not Michael Caine though, is it bro? No, it's not. But it's not bad. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. It's, it's not... alright. It's, right. it's not Michael Caine though. Hello and welcome!